live from Los Angeles, it's theCUBE, covering E3 2018. Brought to you by SiliconANGLE Media. Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We are on the ground at the uh, LA Convention Center at E3, 68,000 people filling every hall, hotel, LA Live, the, the place is crawling. We're excited to be here, there's a lot of things going on, and uh, we're here with Matt Fyroar, and he is the game director for, for ZeniMax Online Studio. That's correct. And we're launching Somerset. Yeah, it launched uh, last week. It's been, uh, been crazily well received. We're super happy with how it's doing. Uh, it's probably some of the best content we've ever done in Elder Scrolls Online. So why is it some of the best content? Is it new gameplay? Is it using new technology? What does it make? What makes this something different than you've launched before? It's uh, basically uh, we do uh, rolling uh, content updates every quarter, and uh, every year we do one big one. And this is the second big one that we've done. So really, this one is set in the in the home of the high elves. So it's kind of really high fantasy, and the so it's green, green, lush, you know, uh, environments and big, tall, white castles and towns. So it just feels epic just going into. To right, it. and the story is really, really good, which I'm not going to spoil. Yeah, don't. But spoil the story stuff. is really good. Right. So, you know, this online game, very different kind of challenges and opportunities than you get in a kind of a classic, a console game. So, how do you address some of those things? What are some of the, the things that you can do that you're excited about that you couldn't do on kind of a traditional console game? And then what are some of the real challenges that you got to overcome to deliver on that promise? Yeah. Well, we started developing this game nearly nine years ago or eight years ago. It's been launched for about four or four years now. Right. But uh, it, it was funny when we when we were in development, we were right at the edge of when cloud technology was becoming available, but it wasn't quite there yet when we were making all the important launch decisions. So we built our own private clouds for this. So we have a private cloud in Europe and a private cloud in North America. So you run this on your own infrastructure? Oh yeah, we run our, totally on our own infrastructure. And uh, you know, we, we've gotten up to 500,000 concurrent users on, on, on our tech. So it's, uh, it's really robust. And uh, the cool thing is, is it hides the server structure from the players. So they just make a decision, do they want to play in North America or Europe? And then after that, they just log in and play and they don't worry about servers. Wow. So, you know, love to advance the technology. It's come a long way, like you said, since you guys have started. So as, you know, kind of compute store yeah. and networking, you know, continue to increase the infinite capacity and asymptotically yeah, approach we would, the cost of zero. We would make different yet. decisions if we were doing it today. But, yeah, uh, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, how do you look at the increase in horsepower, the increase, um, that you have available from an infrastructure point of view and working that back into the game design. Yeah, I mean, now you can start developing in the cloud and then when you launch, you just get more of it from whatever cloud provider you're using, right? right. We, we didn't do it, we actually have iron, we actually have hardware in data centers, so it, it has its advantages because we're completely in control of everything, you know, but, but I think now with the technology going the way it is, you just don't need to make the big investment in hardware up front. You can solve all the problems, you know, in a, in a cloud solution and, right. then, uh, and then deploy either privately or, or, right. or publicly. It's much more flexible now than it was. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I've been in the online gaming industry for decades and uh, obviously the change has just been amazing, especially the last three or four years. Yeah, wait till 5G comes out in a couple <laughs> years. That's going to yeah. take it up a whole yeah. nother uh, level of, of yeah, that. Yeah, my, my last big game, uh, we had to work on 288 modems, so uh, you know, so uh, that was a long time ago. So I'm curious, in just in terms of how you prioritize the additional horsepower that you have to work with between, you know, better graphics, faster play, latency, story. I mean, obviously, you can't optimize, you, you can't maximize all those variables. You're always in kind of an optimization yeah, play. Yeah, absolutely. So how, so how do you think about those things? Well, you know, fortunately, the latest console uh, um, generation is really PC based. They're they're DirectX uh, based. So we really have a PC development technology that is easy to port to Xbox and PlayStation. So um, they solve a lot of those client, you know, frame rate, uh, you know, API problems for us, and we do the back end ourselves. So, yeah, and every year, you know, new stuff rolls out. There's a new, a new, uh, slightly newer Xbox, slightly newer PlayStation, better PCs. So we just stay up to date with the drivers and make sure that we support whatever crazy hardware is coming out. Right. And, uh, and it all works. Right. But then, as you said, at the end of the day, it's about the story. And people yeah. will probably put up with a little bit less on the on the yeah. the graphics if the yeah. story is there. Yeah, it used to be gamers played games because of the technology, and now they play games because of the games. Right. Because no one cares about the technology anymore. Right. Because you can do almost anything on any device now, and now, so it's really important to us as game developers to hide the technology from players and just give them a great experience. Right. So you've been at this for a while. Just love to get kind of your perspective on, on E3 specifically, 
where the show is today, where it's come from, and looking down the road, what do you yeah, see? Yeah, it's funny. I, uh, us old timers, when we go to E3, we always try to figure out how many E3s we've been to. And I, I actually don't know, but it's got to be 20. Like, I went to the Atlanta ones in the late 90s. And um, so I, the change, it's funny. Everything's changed and nothing's changed. Right, right. Like, uh, people are always super excited. There's always gamers that, that want to see the newest stuff. That hasn't changed at all. But just the sheer technology difference is, uh, you know, monitors are thin now. They were giant CRTs back then. Right, right. You know, just, just the funny, it's much easier to load in and out because all the technology is much smaller. The booth, you know, there's a lot, a lot of open space in this booth. It right. used to be you needed, you know, whole rooms of technology driving everything and, and you don't need that anymore. And that's it's before just, you brought the chillers in, right? Yeah, to yeah. keep the stuff from blowing up. Yeah, yeah we still have those. They're just, they just don't need to, be, need to be quite as big now. All right, so Matt, give you the last word on, on Somerset. What should people know? Where should they go? What yep. should they jump in? On. So the Elder Scrolls Online is is a phenomenon, right? So it's a uh, uh, Somerset's the latest chapter for it. You can get it on Xbox, PlayStation, or or PC. Um, we roll out content every every quarter. So we have a, a dungeon DLC coming up next called Wolf Hunter, and then a story DLC coming out fourth quarter. And we're working on huge plans for next year. All right, and hang out with 11 million of your closest and friends. And hang out with a huge community. 500,000 of them concurrently. A huge community, which is awesome. We yeah, it's it. all about community, right? Yeah, exactly. All right, Matt. Well, thanks for taking a couple of minutes of your day. Thank you. All right, he's Matt. I'm Jeff. You're watching the Cube from E3 at LA Convention Center. Thanks for watching.